Hello, brother. <laughs> How are you? Pretty good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. good. Uh, sorry for the bad English, but I will try. No worries. I think the question is, why don't you worship Jesus? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am Muslim, so I believe I have a big respect for Jesus, Isa. Uh, he's my prophet, of course. So my only thing against Christianity is uh, the Trinity and the changes in the Bible. That's the only thing. Uh, so if you can convince me in that, I will try to understand Christianity more. Okay. So, uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. If you have any problem mm -hmm. in it, I don't, uh, let's, let's talk about, let's talk about the, let's work backwards. Let's do the simplest thing first. And then let's do, let's work our way backwards to, to the Trinity. We'll do the changes first. Yeah. Um, why do you believe that the Bible has been changed? Uh, because the oldest Bible is uh, written Greeks, I think that's that's I read that, yeah. uh, and uh, Jesus speaks Aramaic. Aramaic. Uh, All right, yes. so let's break this down one by one. So the Gospel was written in Greek, mm -hmm. um, and you're saying that Jesus spoke Aramaic, so therefore uh, it's been changed. Not, but it's not the same. Like. Uh, something is written in, in Jesus' language and it's been changed in other language. So it's not the same as before. All right, so let me ask you this. Let's see if your logic remains the same. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus speak Arabic? I, th um, I don't know. I ac actually, I don't know. I can't give him false answer, but I don't actually know. I think yes. Because the word Aramaic uh, uh, means Arabic, I think. I don't know for sure. It's not Arabic. Aramaic and Arabic are two different languages. Okay, so so I don't know. So I don't know the answer. All right, so let's just let's just go with your first one that he spoke Aramaic, not Arabic. Right okay. now, the Quran is written in Arabic, yet it quotes some of the words of Jesus. Right. It says Jesus said this, or Jesus said this, and in and, and some situations, right? Yes. Okay. So does that mean now that G the Quran changed the word of Jesus since it's quoting him in Arabic and not Aramaic? Mm. Can you, uh, uh, what's, what's your point actually therein? Your point. You're saying you're saying that there was a change with the gospel because it was what we have is Greek. It's written in Greek, yes. yet Jesus's language was Aramaic. Yes. So because it's not written in his native tongue, that means that it's been changed. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. OK. Yes, I said that. So same logic, just with the Quran then. The Quran quotes Jesus in Arabic, which is not his native tongue. The gospel quotes Jesus in Greek, not his native tongue. The Quran quotes Jesus in Arabic, not his native tongue. So that means that the Quran changed the words of Jesus then by that logic, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to stay no. um La, uh, la, do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying or? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to understand, but like it's written in Greeks, but we, we know that even in the Quran, it says that, uh, that in Surah 5171, it says that, uh, Jesus, the Messiah, and he isn't the, he isn't God. And there is, there is even explanation about the Trinity in it. No, no, that's, that's going way away from where we're, what we're talking about right now. We're talking about whether or not your reasoning for why you think the Bible or the gospel has been changed mm -hmm. is legit. That's what, we're that's what we're checking right now. I want to show you that your reasoning for why you believe the Bible is changed would work against you as a Muslim. Because you're saying that because the gospel's written in Greek, 
which was not Jesus's language, means that the gospel has been changed. Therefore, the same reply, the same applies to you. Your Quran written in Arabic quotes Jesus in Arabic, not in Aramaic. It quotes Jesus in Arabic, which is not Jesus's native tongue, not his native language, which means that if we're going by your logic, that the Quran changed the words of Jesus and therefore we can't trust it. We can't trust the Quran when it talks about the words of Jesus. You get it? Yes, I get it. I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I understand what you mean. I don't have s something against it, but there's, there are still verses. I don't know out my head, but, uh, I can send okay. it to you, but so, if so you want. You, this is what I would ask you. Yeah. When the Quran quotes Jesus, mm -hmm. do you trust what the Quran is saying, even though it doesn't quote him in his native tongue? Do you trust what the Quran says, even when it, when it quotes Jesus? The Quran's in Arabic, so it doesn't make sense if it's in Aramaic. So you understand me, I think? Very good. The, the, the gospel was written in Greek. The gospel was written in Greek, Koine Greek. It was not written in Aramaic. So it does, and the people around Jesus' time, most of the people under the Roman Empire spoke Koine Greek. So it would make sense for them to write the words of Jesus in a language that would reach everyone. If they want to spread their message, they're going to spread it to everyone. So they're going to write it in Greek. So it doesn't make sense to write the whole thing in Aramaic when they're trying to reach everyone and mostly people who don't speak, who don't speak Aramaic. I understand it. I think I lost in this one. Uh, truly, I know, but I still have some verses that explains like why the uh, Bible has been changed, but okay. I can't, I can't give you if you follow me another sure. time. Sure. Uh, do you want to move to the uh, other subject? Or? Well, yeah, well, we're on, we're on the Bible being changed. So if that point, if that point has been dealt with, let's, because I want to solidify that as a Muslim, it's not a good thing for you to say that the Bible has been changed. Okay. That's, that's what I'm going to lead you to. So we'll finish this and then we can get to the Trinity. Okay. So, but you said you have some verses that yes. suggest that the Bible has been changed. So I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead. I can't say it at my head because I am not good in English and I don't know how to speak it in the right way. And I don't want to embarrass myself in it. Okay. It's okay. So, bro. We, can, we can help each other. No, nobody will judge you. Uh, if I if I hear what you're saying, I'll I'll most likely know the verse you're talking about, or I could just use the computer and pull it up. Uh, give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, John. Five, uh, five, four. It's not uh, tip, typically found in the most modern translations. That's what I think. John five four. John five four. You're saying that there is a textual variant in John five four. It's it's not typically found in most uh, translations. Okay, so we'll go to John five four. Let's see if there's a textual variant there. And so you're saying textual variants would mean that the book has been changed? It's not found in the modern translations, but you say uh, uh, the translations are all the same. The, so the Bible is the same, but f five, four, it's not nobody typically found the most. Nobody, uh, nobody says that. I, I had most Christians say that. Okay. Like from my experience, I think. How do I pull about parallels? All right, so John 5, 4. All right, so King James has it. The New American Standard Bible doesn't have that textual variant. The rest seem to have it. Dewey Reigns have it, ESV doesn't. Okay, excellent. 
All right, yeah, so it seems that there's a textual variant here. That doesn't mean the Bible's been changed because it's in, it's in uh, most manuscripts but didn't survive in other manuscripts. Mm -hmm. And there were, I think, in 1684, there were uh, 14 books removed from the church, I think. I that, that doesn't have anything to do with the, oh, with okay. the Bible. Yeah, right? Yes, I but, think. So what you're sh what you're showing me here is a textual is what is called a textual variant, where a verse or some words would be one way in a in a manuscript, but might not have survived or be in another way in a different manuscript. It doesn't mean that th it's been changed, though. But they are not found in the modern f <laughs> uh, translations in the modern translation. Translations. That's fine, but we have the manuscripts that have this verse. This is why other translations have this verse. So you, when you're dealing with English translations, these English translations go based off of a what is called like a, a manuscript tradition. They hold to a particular manuscript tradition. So some might, you know, deal with like earlier manuscripts, an earlier manuscript tradition. Some may deal with majority manuscript tradition like most of the manuscripts have this so this is what we go by you know other translations will be like oh this is not in the earliest manuscripts of this text so this is what we'll go by All right but nothing is lost because it's in the manuscripts it just possibly didn't survive the earlier ones but you you see how it's not lost because we have it mm -hmm. yeah i understand it i think mm -hmm. And there's some con constructions in the Bible, or yeah, that's I read that also. So well, sometimes I'm, before we move to to something okay. else, I just want to make sure that you understand. Like, yes, so te textual variance doesn't like do, for us doesn't mean that the Bible is not preserved. What for us we don't we don't have this idea that the Bible has to be the same or every manuscript have to, has to be the same word for word, letter for letter. We don't believe that. We believe that preservation means that the message is the same and consistent. It's unchanged. That the, the theology is still the same. It's unchanged. It's different for you as a Muslim. You as a Muslim, I assume that you believe when you say the Quran is preserved, you believe that every single word, every letter is exactly the same always been no matter where you go, no matter what Quran you pick up, right? That's what you believe, right? Yes. Yeah, so we have two different views on what preservation is, okay? For us, preservation is as long as the message is preserved, because there's gonna be textual variants. There's gonna be differences in the manuscript. Like people are, these are people copying stuff. So there's gonna be copious errors or uh, an erasure here, a mistake, you know, misspelling. You know, stuff like that, that happens. But the message is still going to be there. It's unaffected. With Islam, though, there's a problem because when you believe that every word, every letter is still the same all the way going back to Muhammad, that's not true. You also have textual variants in, in Islam, in the Quran. You have these, you know? And so this view your view of preservation is really dangerous to your belief system. Yes, I I understand. I think we we are clear with this one. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to move to the second one, or are you just good now? Well, I I want to show you. I want to show you something about about the Quran here. That the Quran itself it has textual variants. Have you ever seen these before? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. What, what, what's your what's what, uh, what's your native tongue? How do you mean? Okay. So you don't speak Arabic. How do you mean? Okay. So you don't speak Arabic? I do I speak Arabic, but I can't read in Arabic. Oh, you can speak it but not really read it. Okay. Okay. I'm well trying to learn it, but yes. Okay, well I'll, I'll just show you like a, a little one. I'll show you a little one. Now this one, in my opinion, does not is not like detrimental to the context of the verse, but I'm just showing you that it is a textual variant, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you where in one verse, it has a word, right? In one, in one particular Quran, 
while in another Quran, that word is missing. It's not there at all. All right? They have a different meaning. It's also because there are, there are different dialects of uh, Arabic. Oh, no, this is a, it's not, it's not dialects we're talking about because dialects means like it's just how you pronounce a word, how you say it. But the word would still be there. So I'm not, I'm not talking about dialect. I'm talking about the actual text. There's a word that is there in one Quran. And then the, that same word is gone. It's not in the other Quran, you know? Let me show you. Uh, still, the, in Google, when I type, has the Quran has been changed, there are still, the Quran has never been changed. So, of course they say that. That's, that's false. You're, those are, when you pull up on Google on that question, you're, those are Islamic websites that are going to lie to you and do that. So look here, I'm about to turn my camera around so you can see. So this is an example of what I'm talking about. So you see how this is, this is the Hafs, this is Hafs on authority of Aslam. This is the Hafs recitation of the crime, okay? And so here's the verse here. This is chapter 57, verse 24. Chapter 57, verse 24. So here you have, right here, this is the verse. Now, the word that we're going to be focusing on is this word right here, hua. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's in the Hafs Quran. But when we go to, I think this is the Kulun and the Warsh. Warsh Quran, the word hua is not there. But still, that it has the same meaning as the before one. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the meaning of the verse doesn't change. I don't think. Like I don't. I don't. It doesn't need the word hua to to mean to get across the meaning of what the verse is saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm just showing you is is that not every word or letter has been is the same in your Quran. But the, what do you believe? The Islam has never been changed. Not the no word, like it's the, it has the same meaning. But okay, so at first when I asked you about what you be believe about preservation, at first you said, you like, you affirmed, you said, yeah, every word, every letter, no matter where you go in the Quran, in the world, you pick up any Quran, it'll say the exact same thing word for word. Yeah, but, but the same meaning. I'm, I mean it in the same meaning, not in okay. every single word. Okay, so all right. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. so you're so you're now saying it's not the same with every single word, but it's the same meaning. Now the meaning is preserved. They're all the same, right? but like it, it has the same meaning. If you read the other Quran, it has it's uh, same meaning as everything. Okay, so like, like I said, just to be clear, so you're saying that. There are differences in wording, so it's not the same word for word, but the meaning is always preserved. The meaning is the same. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can I can get with that. That's what we believe as Christians. We believe not every word or every line is the same. There's going to be textual variances. However, the meaning is is the same. The, the, the theology is unaffected. The theology is unaffected. The message is unaffected. Can you give me the two surahs so I can read them? Uh, it's, it's chapter 57, verse 24. Uh, surah of iron, the surah of iron. I don't know how to say that in Arabic or anything, but yeah. Chapter 57, verse 24. And like, like I told you, I was just going to show you a little one. Like this, this one is just showing that a word is missing in one and in, in a few of the other Qurans. However, I believe the meaning is still there, you know? It doesn't change the meaning of the text. Mm -hmm. So that's chapter 57, verse 24. The word is hua. He is. All right. Now, there are some that have different meanings. There are some that have different meanings, like, so you have here... Um, 
If you go to 37 verse 12. So this is 37 verse 12. The word we're going to be looking at right here is Ajepta. Um, the verse says, um, but you were surprised while they mocked. So Allah is talking to Muhammad, talking about the disbelievers when he recited the verses to them. Uh, some of them mocked. And so he's like, well, you know, but you're surprised or astonished while they mocked. All right. Bela Jepta, you were, you were surprised. Now, when we scroll down to the other Qurans here, it'll, you, you know, a lot of them say the same thing. But then we scroll down a little bit. We go to the Caliph Quran. Caliph. Right, this one it changes to Ajep two. Ajep two, which means I was astonished while they mocked. It can it can be the same because it has. Uh, I, yeah, where's this website? This is this is in Quran dot com. I don't think you got the good website because why I'm sure that it's. It's uh, not like this. It is like this, bro. <laughs> I, mean, I uh, well, I don't. I used to have this particular Quran on me, but my friend who I go out and do dawa with, he he has it himself. He has the, he has the actual Quran. But I I could show you like in, it's literally this is what it is in the in the actual book. This website is not bad. It's actually a Muslim website. It's not a Christian or an anti. It's an Islamic website. And it's a whole database here. They give you recitations. They give you Quranic readings. They give you, you know, uh, you know, publishing material. This is the this is an Islamic website, bro. You know, gives you different, uh, like, gives you narrators. Look, so they even have narrators. If you listen to it, it's Ajib too. Watch, watch when I play it. Listen. Hold on, let me turn it up. You're gonna hear him. He's gonna say Bel Ajib too. Watch. Did you hear him? He says Ajeb too. Watch now. Watch when I play this one. It's gonna be Bel Ajeb Ta. You're gonna hear Ajeb Ta. You hear that? It's like the same thing. Yeah, except there's a Ta. The difference is the Ta and the two, which changes the subject. So if it's ta, it's you were astonished. If it's ajab two, it's I was astonished. You know, that's different. So What's that's this verse about? Can you, can you give yeah. the whole context? Yeah, so the verse is about, um, it's about Muhammad talking to disbelievers. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, you know, reciting the revelation to them. And when he recited the revelation to them, he uh, they mocked him. And so Allah is like saying, you know, yeah, you know, you were surprised while they mocked in, in this one. Or in the other one, he's saying, I was surprised when they mocked. Allah saying that he himself was astonished. Mm -hmm. So so this changes the meaning of the text, because one, you have Muhammad being the one who's astonished while they mocked. And then the other one you have. Allah who's being the one who's astonished while they mocked. Now here's the thing. Yes, I, I understand. But can, you see, I can't give answer to it because I, I don't know it. So no. I, no, I, just, I don't, I don't yeah. expect you to give an answer. I just wanted I to, want to give an uh, explanation for it. But like mm -hmm. I haven't um, debated someone that has given me the same first to do to explain it to him. Yeah. Now I can't explain it because I don't have I didn't search it or did some research about it, yeah. so I can't give an I can't give an answer to it. You know where is I and uh, I don't want you to. You don't have to. I appreciate your honesty. Like you don't have to give an explanation or answer or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to show you this. You know, mm -hmm. and so this is usually the explanation that I that I have gotten is that they would say um, that they affirm both that <laughs> that both is is correct that you know muhammad being astonished and allah being astonished that they that both are correct 
Um, and and, you know, that's that's just what it is. You know, it all comes from 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 Muhammad or Allah, whatever. Man, so, I should understand what you're meaning, but like uh, if you give me time to uh, give me an explanation for it, it will be good. I can get I can give it if you give me one day or two, uh, the explanation I can give you. Surely. I mean, look, this is this is my only thing, because how, however you interpret that, that's on you. You can interpret it however you want. My only point was that you have textual variants in the Quran, even some that would change the meaning of the text. You know, however you interpret that text, that's, you know, you have any, you, that's, that's, you're right. You can do that. But I want you to just know now that you do have these textual differences, you know? Yes, I'm surely. Uh... Mm. I, I love your explanation to it and uh, I'm sure I will give you an explanation to it and uh, yeah, but if you give me some time because I never have, ha I have debates with Christians but they are always the uh, other so, mm -hmm. other things and the mm -hmm. other subjects so mm -hmm. if you give me time I will yeah. surely give you Absolutely. And, and let me, let, me let, let you know this too, tomorrow I'm going to be live again, I'm going to be live again tomorrow um, on my YouTube channel. And we're going to be having, we're going to be going through a lot of these. We're going to be showing a lot of these textual differences in these different Qurans that are actually significant, that actually do change the meaning and the context. Okay. So if you want to check it out, I'll be live again tomorrow, bro, on my, on my channel. Uh, yes, I will. Okay. I will show you. For sure. Uh, do you want to move to another subject or? Uh, yeah, do you yeah want sure. We can move on to another subject. Um, yeah, we can move on to another subject. It's about the Trinity, I think. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the, the other thing that uh, stops me in worshiping or thinking that Jesus is God uh, is because uh, at first we see him as a prophet. He's he's an important prophet to us, of course. Uh, and the Trinity it doesn't make sense like if you explain it many christians have explained it to me but like it, something doesn't add up like they explain something something else doesn't add up they explain something else does something else doesn't add up so it's it's the same circle same as always okay so what is uh what is your objection because something simply because something doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean that it's that it's false right not typically, but like, if you think about it, the Holy Spirit is a person. The, in, the, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is an almighty. Uh, the Father is almighty. Jesus is almighty. Mm. These three are almighty. And uh, again, in the Bible, Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, the Father is a person. And Jesus is a person. So, yeah, there are many verses about the, that they are not the same. They are just different gods. Not well, the no. So, okay. So let's try to break down terms then so that we can make sure we understand what we're talking about. So it looks like we may have to make sure we understand the difference between being, what a being is, and a person. Okay. So, so for example, the word being means like it's, a, it's the state of existence. It's what a thing is. Okay, like you are a human being, you know, um, God is a divine being, you know, r r you know, rock is a rock type of stuff, you know, so a being is the, the, the essence of a thing, the state of existence, what a thing is. Personhood is who is who that thing is. So, like, for example, a rock, we can agree together that a rock is a being, right? Yes, but it doesn't have a life in it. Yeah. Correct. So it's a lifeless being. It doesn't have a life. So it's not, and it's not a person, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So a rock is a being, but it's not a person. So already we see the difference. There's a difference between being what a thing is and person who a thing is. Now, let's take it up a step further. We go to humanity, humans. A human is a being, correct? Yes. Now, each person, each human, you would say is a person, right? 
has personhood. Mm -hmm. Good. So how many persons does a human being have? What? One, I think. One. Yeah. Yes, yeah. one person. Each yeah. human consists of one person, right? Now we're going to take it up infinitely further, obviously, with God. What God is, he is one being, God, divine. He's a divine being. Now, how many persons does God have? We believe three. Three, yeah. He has three persons. So it's not that there's three different beings, three different gods. It's one divine being that consists of three persons. That's what the Trinity is. But they're all still not the same. So they're not, they're not the same person. There are three distinct persons, yet they are the same one being. They are united in the same being, the same divine essence. So when, G, when, uh, when in the Bible says that the Father is greater than I, mm -hmm. he, he is giving that uh, someone is better than him. Well, not, but, not better, but it's... So Jesus takes the humble role of a servant, the Bible says. It says that he humbled himself when he took on human flesh. He humbled himself and took on and took on the form of a servant. That's Philippians chapter two. So that means that the father will be greater than Jesus in authority since Jesus took on this, the form of a servant. So it's not that the father and Jesus, like the father is greater than Jesus in essence, meaning in like in this nature, the father is greater than Jesus. No, because they have the same nature. They're equal in that sense. But in the sense of authority, like Jesus submitting to the roles that they have, Jesus takes the submitter role. And therefore, the father in authority is greater than Jesus. It's, it's sim similar to like if you're if you're at work, your boss is greater than you. Right. Mm -hmm. Your boss is greater than you in authority. But you and your boss are both human, right? Mm -hmm. So your boss is, you are equal to your boss as human beings. You're both equal. You're, you both have the same equal value in life and as a human. But we but, are still different souls. Right. The, you, yes. You, you are d d completely different, you know, completely different beings, uh, you know, totally. But what I'm saying is, is that you can be equal with your boss in one sense while, um, you know, submissive or under your boss in another sense. So when she, when Jesus said he and the father are one, he's mm -hmm. saying that they are the same, but now he is saying that the father is uh, in some things greater than him. So that tells us that Jesus, that uh, the father is greater than Jesus and that Jesus isn't mm -hmm. God. No, you, you just missed it again. I understand. If Jesus tells you that he and the father are one, meaning they are the same, mm -hmm. right? They're the same. So they're equal in their essence. They're equal. Nay, by, by what they are, they are equal. They are the same thing. But then Jesus also says that he has humbled himself before the father, right? Mm -hmm. So the father has a higher authority than Jesus because Jesus humbled himself. So the father is greater than Jesus in that sense, because Jesus humbled himself. So Jesus humbling himself doesn't mean that he and the father are not equal in nature anymore. Just like when you humble yourself with your boss does not mean that your boss is a greater human than you. You guys are both equal humans, but you humbled yourself before your boss. So he's greater than you in authority. He has a higher role than you do. A greater role than you do, you know. Um, so that that's what that means. You can be equal in one sense, meaning you're equal ontologically or equal in your essence, what you are in your being. Jesus and the Father are equal. At the same time, though, Jesus also takes the humble the humble role as a servant. So when it comes to authority, the Father is greater than Jesus in that sense, in that sense only, not anything else. So. God is infinity, right? Yeah. Like he is infinity in power, infinity in forgiveness. So when Jesus limited himself, he is not God anymore because he limited himself. He is not the infinity anymore. No. So 
God can veil himself without losing his attributes. Like him humbling himself and walking under human limitations does not mean that he doesn't have his divine attributes. He chooses to restrain himself to uh, accomplish his task. Allah, like for example, Allah does the same thing. Uh, you have a hadith where it says that Allah is veiled in light. You familiar with this? Uh, I think so. Okay, well, let me uh, let me pull it up for you, just so that we can all read it together. I'm gonna show you that even Allah limits Himself. Okay. Um, infinity can't can't be limit. It's infinity. Well, so it's it's not that he. It's like it's, saying it's, it's not that he like he doesn't have that attribute anymore. He just restrains it. He can he by his will. Himself. Okay, I'll, I'll just I'll just show you what I mean. I'll just show you what I mean. Um, they'll... like saying, rock, uh, God make, makes a rock that he can't lift. No, it's not. Watch. Let me, uh, let me show you. Okay. So this is Sunan Ibn Majah, 196, Sahih. Let me just turn this around so you can see. I think I'm familiar with this All right. Sunan Ibn Majah, 196, for everyone wondering. His grade is Sahi. <coughs> All right, let's get into it. So it says, narrated Abu Musa, who said, the messenger of Allah said, Allah does not sleep, and it is not befitting that he should sleep. He lowers the scales and raises them. Now here it is. His veil is light. And if he were to remove it, the glory of his face would burn everything of his creation as far as his great his gaze reaches. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and then the bottom of this kind of just repeats it and just says, you know, glory to Allah and stuff like that. But here's the point right here. This is where we're at. His veil is light. Okay, mm -hmm. now here's my question to you. Is light created? Yes. All right, so he creates the light mm -hmm. and he allows the light to veil him. A created thing veiling Allah, who's infinite. Then he says, if he were to remove the veil of light, if he were to remove that light, that mm -hmm. veil, the glory of his face would burn everything. Is Allah's glory limited? Yes. Allah's glory is limited? Not, no, 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 sorry. Sorry, no. No, yeah, no. So his glory is infinite, just like he is, right? Because that's, that's him. Mm -hmm. So here's my question now. So we have the veil, which is light, which is a created thing that's veiling or blocking Allah's glory so that it doesn't destroy all of creation. Here's my question. What is stopping Allah's infinite glory? Because it's infinite. What's stopping his infinite glory from breaking through the veil and destroying everything? Because Allah wants so. He, yes. he, he's the almighty. Exactly. Said, it doesn't break if I say so. Boom. So. You, you got it. So it's by his will, right? Mm -hmm. So... By Allah's will, he is choosing to restrain his infinite glory so that it doesn't break through the veil and destroy everything. Mm -hmm. It's by his will that he's restraining his infinite glory. Similarly, Christ, when he comes down to earth, and now his veil is Christ, Allah's veil is light. Jesus's veil is flesh. He veils himself in flesh, the Bible says. And but so still, there's th two different things. He's I, Jesus I, is a human and well, well, Allah well, isn't a human or something creation. But the point is, is that both are restraining themselves. Both are restraining the infinite. He limited himself as a human, not but creating he's, something. But he's still God. He's not, he's, he's, he didn't, he doesn't stop being God. He's still God. Being almighty, he's able to take on a human form as well, walk in that human form, and not destroy everything. Veil himself in flesh, 
and not destroy everything or float around or cause everything to burn. But why would God be in a human form if he's there the is. Almighty? There's the question. So your problem isn't whether God can do this because you because God can do it if he wanted to. Your 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 or your problem is why? Why yes. would he do it? Would he yes. do this? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And so and now this is where we get to the answer, okay? So we both understand, I just want to make sure we're clear so that we move on to the to the why. Mm -hmm. We both understand that God would by his imp by his he's almighty. He mm -hmm. by his will can restrain his infinite attributes if he chooses to. So that he could do what he wants. Like if he doesn't want to destroy everything, he can restrain his glory. If he doesn't want to destroy everything, he can restrain his power and stuff like that and walk amongst us. He can do that if he wanted to. But there is always a reason why, but let, let's say we believe something is haram like pork. We say there is always a reason if a research said it's, it's bad for you. So if we ask the same thing, why does Jesus become a human if he's the almighty? And you, most of the Christians say, uh, because he want, he forgives our sins and he dies for our sins. I say, can God forgive us without dying? Like it's mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Does it add up? Okay. So, <clears throat> so you, okay. So you, you kind of know why the why obviously is to appease his wrath. So, so that we wouldn't have to. The reason why he becomes human or takes on the human flesh is to represent mankind so that his mercy and his grace can be bestowed on us because we couldn't earn his mercy and grace. We were sinful, we were evil. There's nothing that we could have done. Now, the reason why God doesn't just forgive us if we're sorry is because God is just, man. He's just and he's holy. And as a just judge and a holy God, he can't just sweep sin under the rug. He can't. And why can't he send the prophet like to teach them, not to himself? Like ah, God said the thing. Okay, look, okay look. move. Uh, yeah, answer my question. Did, did he not? Did he not send Moses? Yes. Did he not send the rest of the prophets? But Isaiah, he, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Did he not send the Messiah? Jesus he knows what will happen, right? Mm -hmm. He sent so the he Messiah. Knew, so he knew that that Moses and the other prophets would fail. So he well, he could just send a prophet no, 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 that will end all this no, without. He could send a prophet to end all of this. That's yes. who the Messiah is. The Messiah is the one that ends all of this because yes. because man fails on his own we can't do it so god comes himself to do it that's the point he so, knows that we will fail each time we we all fall look, look this is what the bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god we all fall short we miss that mark every time so he had to come and do it himself. That's the point. God the Almighty had to do things himself? Because he loves us enough to do that. He didn't have to. He could have just let us perish and uh, but destroyed us all because of our sin and wicked ways and be done with it all. But because he loves us and he's merciful and gracious, he came and did it himself. God. God. That's how loving he is. Like, I have all respect for you and all respect for all Christians, but like, that doesn't make any logical sense. What, I mean, what, is, what is illogical about what I said? Because you gotta right? give me, the, give me the, the, the logical contradiction in what I said. You really just said God himself sent himself to forgive us. And save us. To atone, to atone for himself. our sins and save us, yes. The Almighty, the All Forgiveness, sent Himself. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't really make any sense. You just, again, you think about you're, just, you're just telling me your grievance against it, but you're not telling me 
the logical contradiction. What is the logical contradiction in this theology, what I said? You, because God doesn't need to come himself. I, I said yeah. that. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, hold on. I said that. I said he didn't have to do this. Mm -hmm. He didn't have so to why do this. Did he do because, it? But the alternative of him not doing this is us perishing. That's the alternative. But as I said, he can just send a prophet or send someone he did. as a messenger to he did. give out. Where did he send it? You I, believe that he sent prophets, do you not? Yes, I believe. To but warn them against knew, sin? To warn them against sin and to get back to God? Yes, but he knew people wouldn't listen to to, to Okay, so he prophets. did this. He did. Okay. Why would he send a prophet to end all this? Not himself. A prophet, so so he the prophet could end all this. What can, what can a prophet himself. wait? Wait, how can a prophet can a prophet atone for your sins? God, God can give this uh, to the prophet to do How? It. How if the prophet has his own sins? You believe that a prophet has his own sins, right? Or human yes. just like you? Yes, but he he could uh, let people learn and teach more about God. Like yeah, people can learn, people can learn which the prophets did. They taught about God and things of this nature, but they still sin. The problem is still there. Whether these people learn about God or not is fine. The problem is still there. They are still stained with sin. How do they solve the problem of sin? How do they blot? How do they get their sins blotted out and atoned for? Why would God not forgive us on the day of judgment? Like because he's just and holy. Let, let me let me put it to you this way. You believe that God is the most just and the most holy, correct? Yes. Even more just and more holy than an earth, earthly judge, right? Yes. Okay. So let me put it to you in this perspective. If you were to rob a bank mm -hmm. and you got arrested mm -hmm. and you're before an earthly judge and the mm -hmm. judge says, you're guilty, man. What do you have to say for yourself? And you say, judge, I'm so sorry. I truly, from the bottom of my heart, am so sorry. I made a mistake. I realized I broke, I broke the law. I will never do this again. Okay. Will that judge let you go? Still no, because he still needs to get punished. So, Boom. so yes. do you see? What's the problem in that? Wait, wait. Uh, uh, here you are again. This is where we're at. So on judgment day, brother, listen, let me yes. just ask you this. Have you lied before? Yes, of course. Have you ever I'm stolen lying. anything, even if it's small? Yes. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust, lusted in your heart? In my heart, no, I always lower my, like, I don't, I, I never try to do it. But, but it happens, uh, right? But it happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Just, you, you're human just like I am, bro. So you've lusted in your heart. Um, you know, have you ever wanted something that belonged to someone else? Yes, but I try to deny it. Yeah, you try to deny it, anything. but you, in your, but you failed. So and look, say Alhamdulillah. but just like, just like me, you are, you just admitted that on judgment day, you're going to be approaching God as a liar, as a thief, as an adulterer at heart and as a coveter. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what you're bringing to the courtroom when you face God on judgment day. Mm -hmm. If God is holy and the most just, most just, mm -hmm. if an earthly judge won't even let you, let a let a bank robber go when he's sincerely sorry. Will the most holy judge and God of heaven and earth let you slide on judgment day in his courtroom when you come before him and on your record is lies, adultery in your heart, covetousness and theft? Is he going to let you go? Yes, no, no, no. He won't. He he will punch me, but exactly. I deserve that because I did that. Okay, and I cool. didn't do that. Good. So you're right. You're that, right on that's track. That's the real logic you're, you're, so, you're, you're right on track. Listen, listen, you're right on track. So he won't let you go, even though you say sorry, even though you say, God, I, I made these mistakes. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. He still won't let you go because he's just he has to punish you for your sin. Mm -hmm. But at the same time now, God is merciful mm -hmm. and he's gracious. 
-hmm. So what we need here is a situation, a scenario where God's justice is served while at the same time, his mercy is also served. His grace is also served. The mm -hmm. only way that you that this scenario works is if God himself comes down, takes on human form, represents you and me, and takes on the punishment that we rightly deserve so that the sin that we've committed is punished and dealt with while at the same time God's mercy and grace is displayed on us and where we can let go free out of his courtroom as long as we put our faith and trust in him and him alone. So I think I'm trying to understand the Trinity now, but it still doesn't make sense. I am really sorry. But this is but at first we, we went from salvation the issue and why would God become a man? This is why. This is where we're at right now. Why would we we already believe that God can become a man and take on human form if he wanted to do that? We already agreed that yes. he can if he yes. wanted to. Yes. Now it's the why would he do that? This is the why. Because he, to save you. That's why he did it. Okay, let's look now at our Ummah, now at our people. Do you think Jesus, if Jesus died, what you are saying, if Jesus died for our sins, uh, we will be punished, right? Wait, People what? Will, you see, you are saying we wouldn't be punished because Jesus died for our sins. The, the people who believe in Christ and, and what he did for them, they on judgment day, they are not, they are not, you know, approaching judgment day in judgment. They are actually getting rewarded. So judgment day is not for us. Okay, so you are thinking day. if someone like re is really bad, but he believes in Christ and he steals and he drinks and he does all the bad sins, he will still go to uh, that's heaven. A, that's, that's a false believer. So the Bible says that you have to believe with your heart that Christ is your Lord. Your Lord meaning he's your ruler, you serve him and you obey his commandments. So a true believer in Christ will not be believing in Christ while going on living in sin. The Bible says you've died to that. Matter of fact, look, let me, let me show you now. Let me show you what the Bible says, just really quick. Now, I'm gonna show you what somebody, you're gonna agree with this, you're actually gonna like this, but you know, a lot of you guys hate this person for some reason, but you might be different. You know, you, you seem different all, all together. So look, watch this. This is Romans chapter six. Okay, listen, it says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin mm -hmm. so that the grace of God may abound? He says, by no means, no, you cannot continue in sin when you're in God's grace. He says, how can we who died to sin still live in it? He says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So the Bible says that we who are believers, we died to sin. We died to that lifestyle. So if you're still walking in that lifestyle while with your words saying you believe in Jesus, but you're walking and living in sin and not in newness of life, then you're a false believer. You're a hypocrite. And God will spit you out on judgment day. So it actually, let's say you are right. Why would he punish people that that didn't listen? Like, uh, mm -hmm. why would he not punish them? Because we believe in the day of judgment. We will punish them. The so people, people that did bad deeds, uh -huh. but still uh, like prayed and did everything and give, give support, but they do something bad. Will they go to hell or? No, no so here's, here's the difference. There's a difference between walking or living in sin and when you're in Christ, you, you may fall sometimes. You're not perfect. While we're still in this body, we will fall even as a believer. But the difference between a believer and a sinner is that a believer, when he falls, he gets back up. 
A believer repents and does better and gets better and grows while a sinner is living in sin, is practicing sin, is unrepentant and doing like living in that sin over and over. That's the difference between a sinner and a believer. So a sinner is one who lives in sin. A believer is one who is repented of their sin and gets up when they fall. This is the process, this is called sanctification. When God in your walk with him as a believer, he's making you better and better and better. Okay. okay. So you cannot profess Christ as your Lord and savior while going out uh, fornicating, committing adultery or stealing and well, oh, no, God forgives me. Nah, God, Jesus says when on that day, he'll say, I never knew you and spit you out. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's real. And the Bible is clear on that. No hypocrites allowed. <laughs> it's a no hypocrites yep. club. Yes, I understand. Like the only pro problem by at us because we, why we have problem with the Trinity. It's not, we hate Christians or something. Mm -hmm. but the meaning, because we see Jesus as a prophet, not God, mm -hmm. because we see him, he's an, he's savior, right? He's, he is a guy that a uh, great prophet and everything, but mm -hmm. he isn't God. In the day of judgment, we say the same. If you follow the Sunnah and the Sharia, you will go to heaven and people that didn't believe in Allah and made, made sense, uh, s sense, they will go to hell. So, and will be punished by the ba bad sins. So that's the only problem at us. That we yeah, so, so this is, this is my thing, um, yeah. is that when it comes to who Jesus is, bro, you, you got it wrong because you're disconnected from what he taught and what the prophets taught about the Messiah. The prophets, even before Jesus came, they told us that the Messiah is God in the flesh. They told us this. And then Jesus comes and, and claims it for himself. He says, I give eternal life. He says, I'm the one who forgives sins. He says, I'm the one who's going to judge on judgment day and raise the dead. They will hear my voice and the dead will rise on judgment day. Jesus claims this about himself, bro. So, so to demean him as just a, a good prophet, is it's actually disrespectful to Jesus. It, it's almost like if I'm introducing you to my mother and I don't tell you that she's my mother, I say, yeah, this is just my friend. She's just an acquaintance, just some lady I know, you know, a good friend of mine. That's disrespectful to who my mother truly is. You know? I, I understand. I don't have any disrespect. I, I didn't want to disrespect anyone in this life. No, no, you, no, you, no you don't. No, no, I'm saying you, you personally, bro, you're a respectful, you know, you know young dude, you're, you're cool. What I'm saying is, is your belief about Jesus is demeaning to who Jesus really is. That's what I'm saying. To say that Jesus is just a good prophet is disrespectful to who Jesus really is. Similar to if I say, my mother is just a good friend that would be disrespectful to who my mother truly is to me but i can't also i can't say that jesus is god as a muslim because you can. we can't we can't say that you can because as a muslim you believe in the prophets right yes because but i can't say jesus is god i can't Not say you. that look look if, as a muslim you believe in the prophets <laughs> if you believe in the prophets then you have to believe that Jesus is God because they've taught that Jesus is God. Unless you reject the prophets. I, did, I don't reject it, but I, but I follow the Quran, not the Bible. See, but the Quran tells you to believe in the Bible. Where does it tell that? Oh, what? Dude, uh, go to... Yes, the, you see, he, he, will come, uh, he will go again with the Bible has been changed. We say... We, we, that, we got over that. Yes, but he will go again, like in the other thing, because uh, we we say it's it's the same. It's not the same Bible as before. It's not the same, like uh, the Injil has been given to Jesus, but now it's not the same. It has been changed. 
So that's yeah, based, based, based on again, it's that's a baseless thing. If you're saying that it's been changed, then you're going against your Quran. Like for example, the Quran says that no one can change the words of Allah, right? Yes. The Torah and the Injil were the words of, of Allah. Uh, again, I didn't listen. What did you say? Can you say it yeah, again? I'll it. Yes. Okay. The Torah and the Injil, the Torah and the Gospel, they're the words of Allah, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The Quran says in chapter 18, verse 27, mm -hmm. that none of Allah's words can be changed. No one can alter them. As I said, I will explain them, but if you give me time, but now I can't explain the verses you give me to explain why the, those words have been changed or uh, been but different. You're, you're missing it. If the Bible has been changed, if the Torah and the Gospel have been changed, then the Quran is false because it says none of Allah's words can be changed. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I'm getting it. So to say that the Torah and the Injil are not the same and they've been altered by man and changed, that would mean that the Quran lied by saying that none of Allah's words can be changed. That's, I, I, I never get for the life of me why Muslims still say this, because they're going against the Quran when they say the gospel and the, and the, and the Torah has been changed. There is an explanation for it, but I don't know what it is. Like, if you ask a sheikh about it... I'll tell you what a sheikh would say. A sheikh would say, oh, well, this is talking about the Quran, though. It's talking about none of the words in the Quran can be changed. That's what a sheikh would tell you. That's what they're, they'll try to ex give the explanation. However, the verse doesn't say that. The verse doesn't say none of the words in the Quran can't be changed. It says the truth has been revealed to you from your Lord, and none can change the words of Allah. The words, period. Not the words in the Quran only. It says the words, blink, that's general. Yeah, you need to ask a real sheikh, not, I, d I don't think a sheikh will give such evidence in this. I will, I think he will give a truly answer and, and answer that will just give you what it means. Okay. So until then, can we, yeah. can, I just want to make sure that you see what I'm saying. Does it, yeah, yeah. does it, it doesn't make sense. My, my argument that to say, according to say as a Muslim, that the Bible has been changed doesn't make sense because the Quran says none of Allah's words can be changed. Does that, does that at least does that argument make sense? Yes. So that's why I hold the position that even according to the Quran, the Torah and the Gospel is still intact. It's still good. You yeah. Know? I actually, I I don't have the knowledge in this what you are talking about. I don't have the knowledge in that. Like you are asking me something that I truly don't know about. Like I haven't uh, had, an, as I said, I haven't uh, debated someone about this 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 thing specifically. Yeah. Like yeah. we have debate about Trinity, but not like in this. Mm -hmm. So it will take time to answer your question. Of course. And 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 I'll tell you this: Islam edits. You're you are welcome to join me for any conversation at any time, bro at any time like uh if, if if i'm if i even if i'm in the middle of a conversation with someone else and they're like it's maybe it's a hard-headed person i will drop them for you <laughs> because you know this conversation hold on let me fix this this conversation with you has been um has been amazing you know you've been honest we've been able to get from one point to another it's been a great, it's been a very great conversation, bro. I, I appreciate you. I Do have all my respect to anyone. Like I have learned that from my Quran and I am also not that old. I haven't studied all my, I am only 14 years old. So I am not that wow. old. Well, you're sharp for a 14 year old, bro. So inshallah, I will try. And uh, it's, it's, I am not against anyone. I just want to ask and learn more. It's not about who wins and who loses. For sure. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is. It's about getting understanding and learning and coming to the truth. And when we're faced with the truth, we have to submit to it, right? We got to submit to the truth, no matter if it goes against what we already believe. You know, if the, if the truth is in our face, bro. It is, it is important for us to submit to it. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, if you have any more questions later on uh, or any other time, feel free to to come up and make sure you follow me so that we can like we can talk and stuff like that. And, you know, I'll, I'll try to try to give you everything that I got, bro. I'll try to show you everything I know. And yeah, you know, thank you, brother. OK, for sure. Uh, what, what's, what's your name, by the way? Uh, I don't know if you can say it. Oliver. Oliver? Yes. Oliver. My name's Avery. Good to know you. Good I know. have you have all my respect. Most the Christians don't really respect, but you have all my respect. Thank you. You too. You got my respect as well, brother. <laughs> have a nice day. You uh, too. It was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Take care. All right. That was a great, great, magnificent conversation with Oliver.